the intention is that all those pieces of property are properly conveyed into a trust relationship and that the title is registered uh, within your community. So the answer will be yes. At that time, yes, that feature will be available. In the interim, can you make your own title? Um, yes, you are able to um, structure documents and instruments in the form of deeds and, and, and other elements that seek to uh, uh, lodge a claim on abandoned and, and indeed into salvage property. What I would suggest, uh, and this is just you know, talking on, on ideas, what we've, what we've found is that when you present any kind of private document, it needs to be covered by some pro forma that the court will accept as the transmission of it. If you think back to the ecclesiastical deed poll, the reason that we were uh, putting, uh, sta not stapling, but gluing a public doc one of their documents onto the back of our documents was so that their document is the transmission vehicle for the private document. A less controversial way and an easier way is simply to get the forms for the submission of evidence or for the lodging onto the record, whatever the pro forma uh, forms are in your particular area, and then use that and make sure that you annex here to in full the associated private document. Uh, I can't give you much more at this point because we don't have any kind of pro forma examples, but I would go and ask, I would suggest you go and look at University of Acadia and the material prepared by Ron on that area uh, and see if you can mimic it for your own matter. Okay. Very good. Thank you for that, Frank. Uh, next question. Uh, should you form peace treaties with uh, whatever entity or country <clears throat> where possibly that X is some alleged authority that you are presumed to be under or to be at war with? Well, I think there's, I think there's a lot more work that can be done in reading the Geneva Conventions and the Hague Conventions in mind of it being part of the uh, fabric of law and the procedure of law that we are uh, under when we deal with our government that has declared war on us. So yeah, I think there's a lot of benefit in looking at some of the mimics of that. However, and I, I put this however in place, um, the level of ignorance in their system means that um, it needs to be in the right form and it needs to be in the right way. I, I think treaties in the context of how they deal with private international law are obviously a very powerful instrument. I would not consider a treaty on its own as being any superior form other than it's one of the few avenues under private international law to try and get some kind of peace. So I would certainly go and look at those things. Yes, um, we are yet to fully investigate private international law and the Geneva Conventions and the Hague Conventions uh, as to what it offers. But m my feeling with international law per se <clears throat> is that it, it is such an absurdity that um, uh, for whatever work we deal with, it should only be viewed as a temporary measure. Um, uh, it's such an aberration. To, to, to have to deal with the principles of war to deal with a government because your government has declared war against you to me, uh, it, it, it just, just makes me feel sick we're dealing with that kind of madness. So, yeah, go and have a look. I think there's, there's stuff there that's worth pursuing, and treaty is one of them. All right. Thank you, Frank. All right, let's try Northeast Texas on the phone lines again. Northeast Texas. Just let you know when you're unmuted. Try that again. Are you there? Yes. Hello. Hello yes, we can hear you. Hi. Okay. Uh, actually, what I'd like to do is establish contact with Roberto from Toronto, Canada. Uh, 903 uh, 
799-5500. If, if Roberto would be kind enough to call, I'd, I'd like to talk to him uh, for a minute. Appreciate okay. that. And Oh, and, and, and real quick, the, the signature to the left was what, private? Um, my understanding, and, and, and I hope someone can correct me in the chat, is that um, when you sign... Um, Center is ecclesiastical. That's the one I'm going to use. <laughs> yeah, center is ecclesiastical. And I always get the confused where the left is private and then right is public. Um, but my understanding is that um, uh, I think I even said that left was public. I think left is private and right is public and center is ecclesiastical. See, I always get them mixed up. But if you if you are writing from the position of a member of One Heaven, or you're writing with your ecclesiastical deed poll, the centre is where you, you sign. Much appreciated. With thumbprint, hopefully, and not with a signature. <laughs> and, and keep up the good work there, Frank. Uh, thank you. Thank Much you. appreciated. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your question. All right, let's get over here to chat again. And just as a reminder, if anyone on the phone has a question, press star 8 to get yourself put in the question queue. All right, next question has to do with the EDP. Um, I'm being asked if in step five for the EDP, what date is on the EDP uh, from step two date or the current date? Um, the, the date on step five, um, if you're, the, the issue date is the date that you issue the step, and if there is a date within the um, step, then it would be referencing to the previous step. So if there's only one date, and it's the issue date, then it's the date that you're issuing the instrument. If there are two dates being mentioned, two, two times, one will be the, the issue of the instrument, and the other will be the previous time that was issued for the previous. So I hope that, that, that clears it up. I have had, and, and I, again, I apologize for, for how long it's taken. I have had a number of uh, emails concerned just the clarity of some of the steps, and that really is, um, uh, I'm sorry for that. And we do need to tidy up the EDP steps at the end so that it's much clearer. I also have been mentioned, and it's worth mentioning this again, I've been mentioned. I've been asked a number of times, where, what, why aren't we doing the bills, and why aren't we pursuing the bill element when clearly there is an injury? And all I want to say about bills in their system is, the the system is viewing anyone that is putting in bills, certainly uh, outside of Ukadia, not anyone in Ukadia, but anyone outside of Ukadia, anyone that's been going down the UCC path and dealing with big bills for injury, the system is using it as a way of producing a high-value court case. And I've heard already of a couple of people who are very knowledgeable, who have done nothing wrong by their own rules, who are being prosecuted purely because they can make whopping bonds on uh, trying to get what they did up as a criminal case. So bills, unfortunately, in, in the mind of uh, the present system that is broke, that is dumbed down, and that is desperate, to me, is not necessarily a very wise step to pursue. That's all. There's nothing wrong with what we've done. There's nothing deficient with what we've ever said. That's the reason we're not including bills. Okay? Great. Thank you, Frank. Could you also cover the newest information regarding the thumbprint? That was the last part of this question, having uh, whether the document should have fresh thumbprints. Uh, could you go ahead and cover the um, ink and colors and the newest? Oh, the, 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 should they have thumbprints and, and what color? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Fresh okay. thumbprints. Yeah. It shouldn't be copies. It should always be fresh thumbprints, but uh, go ahead and yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully everyone knows that that we have, you know, ended any kind of history of 
of sealing things uh, in thumbprint in, in your own blood, and that's because of the end of the age of Mithra. Um, that's because there were several thousand documents produced and the system completely and utterly ignored it and therefore there's overwhelming proof that the system dishonoured their own heritage and, and history. So the thumbprints uh, that we um, suggest in terms of colour uh, is red. Um, there, is, there is evidence that other colours themselves um, play a significant role and this goes back to this question of custom that we mentioned before about position of things and the use of colour because they're missing such and they're ignoring such fundamental parts of their own system rather than confusing people we, we, we simply say red being the standard colour red ink being the standard colour and yes the use of thumbprint and not using uh, a signature if one is forced to use a signature on one of their documents because they will not recognise anything else, then of course you have the use of V.C. being via coactus, being uh, under duress, or if they don't even permit that, the use of uh, ellipse, 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 which is dot, 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 and then a signature. So yes, we, we um, continue to encourage the use of a thumbprint where you are given the choice and the use of the colour red for that thumbprint. All right, thank you, Frank. All right, let's go to the next question we have on the chat. Um, how does changing one's name collapse a SSK trust, and can I revert to using the Gaelic version of my Anglicized name to affect this. Okay, um, so can you can you just give me that first bit again because I've just I just missed that first part of the question. The first part of the question: How does changing one's name collapse a SESAK trust? Right. Okay. And, well, let's or start with does that. it? Or you know so. If you want to address that part first, then the, the second yeah, part let's has do that. to do with the version. Yeah, okay. Let's do that one bit first. The use of the ecclesiastical deed... The ecclesiastical deed poll has multiple functions, multiple, multiple functions. And one of those is to give notice to the heart of what the Sester KV or FIDES commissaries are that we are competent to administer our own affairs. Lord Blackstone in his commentaries makes a rare and exceptional reference to Sester KV and it's the only one on record of this where he states there is no remedy in Sester KV. It is a rare admission. There is no remedy in Sister KV. Now, what, what did that mean? Where there is no remedy in law, law does not exist. This is a maxim of law from the first civilization to the present day. In other words, a law that has no remedy cannot possibly be a law. There must be a remedy. If there is no remedy, it's not a law. It's simply... Uh, an action by thugs, criminals, or some other, uh, some other group. The problem with SESTA KV is that they modified it to the point where no remedy could possibly still exist. We only found this out after we had started the SESTA KV, uh, sorry, the, the ecclesiastical deed process. It doesn't invalidate the EDP process. It merely highlights the unlawfulness of what they're doing. And what we found is that the Sester KV Trust and the creation of those trusts is the public side of the private ecclesiastical ritual whereby every single child born in a hospital, in a state that has been a signatory to the Roman legal system, is baptised in the hospital through the rituals of birth. Every single child 
since the 